If you have your Bibles, you can turn to uh, 2 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians. I just want to welcome any first-time guests that are with us today. We're so glad that you are here. Yeah. Uh, we, we are so glad that uh, you've taken the time out. We realize that there's so many places you could go. Hey, maybe you're not a first-time guest. Maybe you're a second-time guest. Well, welcome back. Yeah. You know, maybe you're a third-time guest, yeah. all right? So welcome back. Time, listen, you're, you're, yeah. you're, 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 you're home, family. your family, welcome home. Yeah. We're just glad that you're with us today. Um, if you haven't been with us exactly today, then I just want to catch you up. We're actually in a series all about eternity. We've been talking about answering the question, what happens to us after we die? We're like, oh, that's a real bummer. That's kind of a, that's kind of a downer, you know, type of a, a sermon series. But listen, what we really want to do is just, we want to encourage, we want to equip. We want to challenge, and, and I believe that the Word of God does that. It, 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 it challenges us, and there's just a few things that we've been learning. By the way, you can you can find all of these uh, sermons on our YouTube channel, and if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, that's a great thing to do. Also, if you can help us get the word out about New Song Ch Church by checking in on Facebook, by just adding us, or or saying, "Wow, that you know, whatever, whatever, that was awesome." So, just help us get the word out about New Song. But hey, we're talking about a couple of things. The first thing is this: no matter what you believe, the idea is the Bible teaches that eternity is a reality. That when we leave, when we we leave this life, we are going into one or two, of two places that the Bible teaches about it. And so, the second series, the second uh, sermon, we, we learned that hell is for real. It's a, it's a real place. It's an actual place. And then last week, we kind of just scratched the surface. We just we couldn't. We don't can't really talk a lot about it because we don't really know. But just learning what heaven will be like, and it's going to be awesome. And so uh, today we're going to dive into a topic that you may have never actually heard a sermon on before. Or maybe you never thought about it, or maybe you didn't even know about it. So I'm, I'm excited to, to kind of bring this to you today, this idea, and that is, it's called the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ. There's, so we're going to kind of break that down. And if you're in 2 Corinthians, I never told you where to go after that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I want you to, to um, look in verse 1. And I'm going to read this. And then we're going to pray. We're going to dive into this topic today. And I pray that it's a blessing to you. If this, this sermon or this uh, text sounds familiar, it's because in the very first week, we actually referenced this text. And we broke down the first few verses. But I'm going to go beyond that. But in order for us to get the context, how many know context matters? When you're reading the Bible, getting the full context of what is, what is being said really does matter. Yeah. And so let's look all the way to verse 1. Uh, we're a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, so it's not going to kill you to read a few verses. Amen? Amen. All right, all right. Let's, let's start in verse 1. For we know, everybody say no. That if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, that's talking about our bodies, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Isn't that beautiful? Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. Which is kind of like, thanks, Captain Obvious. Yeah, if we're clothed, we won't be found naked. Anyway, for while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Verse 5. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him. I want to say that again. So we make it our goal to please Him. Whether we are at home in the body, or away from it. And this is where I want to land. But I just didn't want to just give you verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Let's dive in it. Let's get in it. 
Lord, we thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would just teach us in these few minutes. And we give you glory for all you're going to do. In Jesus' name. I used to teach apologetics. I uh, actually used to work alongside the amazing Pastor Dustin, who is an amazing science, math teacher, and all these things. And like, I'm like, uh, Bible is what I got for you. But I love teaching apologetics in high school. And if you don't know what apologetics is, it's just sharing your faith. It's defending your faith. It's it's letting people know. And you know. And uh, one of the things about uh, teaching. In general, if you're a teacher, where's all my teachers at? You're a teacher. You're a teacher, whether in school or teaching the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Here, one of the thing. Let's give them a hand. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. It ain't easy, and summer's coming. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that uh, about teaching is to evaluate how people are grasping the concepts as we give them a test. Right? You give them a test to, to evaluate, and, and you know, test taking isn't always easy. And so as teachers, how many know that you really want your students to pass the test? Yeah. You really want them to pass, so you work hard at getting, okay guys, this, I mean, how many of you, this is going to be on yeah. the test, right? Yeah. <laughs> you may want to write this down, right? You, you may. And so one of the things I would do, because, you know, Bible, uh, let's just face it, in a Christian school, everyone's really worried about, you know, all the other classes that, that colleges matter, bottom, how many know the Bible is pretty much like, yeah, you know, whether you get into St. John's or whatever, they're not going to care how you did in Bible class. Yeah. Right? They want to see, they want to know how you did on your SAT. So I get it. I get it. That my, my class is lower on the list of, of importance. But I used to say to them, listen, listen, at the end of the day, I want you to understand, know and understand how to defend your faith because when you get in school, it's, your faith is going to get challenged. All right. And so it's good, it's good. And, and this is what I would do. I would say to everybody, listen, the answers to you, the questions that are going to be on the test are in the book. They're right there. They're in the chapter. And I would actually go through and I would say, so because I wanted them to, to be able to pass their test for finals week. Okay? Now this is why I'm bringing this up. Because the answers to the questions that we're asking today or that we're thinking today particularly about eternity, all, all the things that we've been looking at, can, can I just say, they're in the book. The an we don't have to go to the world, we don't have to get people's opinions, the answers yeah. are in the book. And listen, there's a final coming, there's a final, this is what Paul says, that there's going to be a judgment seat of Jesus, there's going to be a, a time where Jesus himself is judging us, and you'll think, well, what am I going to judge now, what am I going to do, oh my God, somebody tell me Jesus! <laughs> answers right here. So I got three little quick points and then we're going to we're going to go. Alright? We're, we're, three little quick points and then we're, we're out of here. And the first one is this. I want you to write this down. Christians will be judged. Believers in Jesus. Disciples of Jesus. Whatever you are. Followers of Jesus. We call ourselves all different things, right? Believers, Christians, disciples, we will be judged by Jesus. I have some scriptures for you I'm going to throw at you. You can write them down. You just find a couple of them there and they're just noted for you. Romans chapter 14, verses 10 through 12. This is what the Apostle Paul says. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Boy, we need to hear that one. Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. For it is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will give an account. Everyone say each. each. You're an each. I'm an each. I'm an each. Sounds Italian. It does. I'm an each. Anyway, listen. <laughs> Sounds like I'm talking to one of my uncles. So anyway, listen. Uh, we're, we're each, so each of us will give an account of ourselves to who? Uh, to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. What we all need to know and understand is that one day, 
every single one of us who love Jesus, who serve Jesus, we will stand before Jesus and Jesus himself will be our judge. John 5, 22, Jesus' own words. The Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son. So you may be thinking right now, because especially maybe you haven't yet gone to discipleship class, I want to encourage you to do that so you can, some of these things, maybe you haven't signed up for Growth Track. You know, Growth Track didn't start today because nobody signed up. You know, that made me a little sad. A little sad because it was Growth Track, man. Got to grow. Got to grow. But it's okay. There'll be another growth chat. It's okay. But so, so so you may be thinking, oh, wait a minute. Wait wait a second because you kind of blow my mind here. I thought that when I, I confess Jesus as Lord of my, of my life, right? I, I confessed uh, my sin before him and I trusted him to be my Lord and Savior that, that I was saved, right? And, and yes, that's true. You are saved. You are saved. So, so, what's up with this judgment thing then, Mike? Fill this in the blank. It's a judgment of service, not of sin. It's a judgment of, of service. Wait a minute, what? Listen to this. One day, you and I will stand before Jesus and be judged not based on our sin... Because 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 tells us that our sin was bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus. Yeah, can we get an amen for that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so not, we're, we're, we'll stand before Jesus one day, not for our salvation, because we can never earn our salvation. We can never work for our salvation. Our, our salvation is a free gift. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, for it is by grace that you've been saved through faith, and this not from your it is a gift from God, not of works, so that you can't brag about it. So that you can't be like, see how awesome I am? I got myself to heaven. <laughs> yeah, Jesus says, no, 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 no. That's not how you do it. It's not a, the judgment that we stand before. We're going to stand before Jesus one day in eternity. We're going to stand before him. And it's not a judgment based on whether or not we will go to heaven. Because we're in heaven. Right. It's a judgment that's based on what we did. I want you to hear me. It's a judgment based on what we did here on earth while we were waiting to go to heaven. <laughs> I'm such a wow. What is this series over? <laughs> Can't take any more, Pastor. Man. Take no more. Let's talk about heaven some more. Let's talk about seeing some people that we know and love. The big idea is this. What we believe, and this is what I want you to understand. This is not in your notes, but I want you to hear me. What we believe <clears throat> will determine how we behave. What, what we believe about eternity, what we believe about God, what we believe will ultimately determine what we do, how we behave. Listen, you're here today, you're watching online, uh, you don't believe in God, you know, so then you're going to live your life, life as if there is no God. You're going to live your life, um, you're going you're gonna to live it for you, and by the way, if you are here, we're glad you're here. If you feel that way, we're glad that you are here, that you're actually seeking and looking out for things, and, and listen, this is a no judgment zone, it's a no fly zone for judgment. Judgment, not allowed over this premises, okay? We're glad you're here. Yeah. But what I'm, I'm just telling you what you can expect, you're living your life, ultimately, you are the God that you serve. Your way is the way that you want to walk. Your thoughts are your highest thoughts. You're, you're following the science of life. I don't know what you're saying, how you want to put it. But this is what you're, what you're doing. And so that your life is going to be centered on pleasing yourself. Your life is going to be centered and focused on your happiness. It's going to be centered and focused on your success, your accomplishments. What you believe will determine how you behave. You're going to work hard. You're going to work hard at, at your career. You're going to work hard at your education. You're going to, you might even be working hard at your marriage. Whatever it is, if, if you're doing it apart from God, you're ultimately doing it for you. 
You're building up your, your 401k, looking to retire, looking to get out of here, whatever you're trying to do, you're doing it. Listen, all, all no judgment, but you're doing it for, for you. How, what you believe will determine how you behave. If you have a healthy fear of God, did you notice that we don't talk about fear of God? Well, we're not supposed to fear God. God is nice. God is nice. But there's a healthy fear of God. There's a, there's a healthy fear of God. Like, not like a fear like Dorothy and the Tin Man and the Lion fell in front of the Wizard of Oz type of fear. But an awestruck, yeah. like, wonder, a, a, a amazement of who he is, the fear of God. The, the Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. To fear God. To fear, to, to, to have a holy fear, a holy reverence for God is a good thing. And it's something that is missing sometimes in today's yeah. world. Where we've become real self-centered. We become really self-focused. Even followers of Jesus. Yes. You know, we, we tend to, to think about everything like I'm the center of the scripture. No, no, Jesus is the center of the scripture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. It's all about him. It's all for him. And so that we, we, we kind of got to get, get away from this. But it's okay to have a fear of God. If you live your life with a healthy fear of God, you make him the center of your life. You begin to surrender your life to him. He will be, he becomes, or his will becomes your will. It, 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 this is what happens. Uh, his plans become your plans. Uh, his purposes become your purposes. What you believe will determine how you behave, what you start to do. And I just want to tell you this, that the more that you get to know God, the more you fear God, right, in a great way, in a good way, in a good, healthy fear, the more you fall in love with God. The closer yeah. you get to Him, the more you fall in love with yeah. Him. The more you fall in love with Him, the more you want to please Him. The more you want to please Him, the more you want to serve Him. Yeah. Everything happens from the inside out. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a awesome, it's an awesome thing. It's an awesome thing. So, so going back to our, our original text that we just read, um, in verse 9, Paul says, listen, I live by faith, not by sight. I'm confident, and I say I would prefer to be away from the body. Verse 9, so we can make it our goal to please him. Yeah. But I thought I was supposed to make it, like, he's supposed to please me. <laughs> like, I thought when I accepted Jesus... I was always going to get a parking spot in Co-op City. <laughs> I was going to meet the love of my life. Oh, uh, you know, I'm going to get nothing but rain, blessing down, and yeah. Man, I wish that was so true. Especially the parking lot spot thing. <laughs> that would be great, but I can't tell you, listen, accepting Jesus doesn't mean that all of your dreams are going to come true. Come on. Accepting Jesus... Really accepting Jesus means that you are surrendering your life to Him. Yeah. You're repenting of your yeah. sin. You are asking Him to forgive you of that sin. You become a follower of Jesus. You become a child of God. And now your heart and your desire yes. becomes His. Yes. I'm bought with a price. It was a high price. A high yeah. price yeah. that Jesus paid. So I make it my goal, Paul says. This is Paul. He wrote most of the New Testament. And he's like, I make it my goal to please him. Okay. I, dude, you, I think you were hitting the mark. Yeah. Right? I think you were hitting the mark. So what I'm saying is, what you do as a Christian matters. Yes. What you do matters. And there's no little do. Yeah. There's only big do. Yeah. There's a lot. Never mind. It's only big do. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why these words come to me. <laughs> How you choose to live your life, family, matters. Yeah. The decisions that you make, they, they, they matter. How you love matters. Yeah. It, there's no small thing. Um, how you serve matters. Mm -hmm. it, it matters. The motives behind why you serve, they matter. Everything points back to Jesus. Why you, why you 
do what you do when you do what you do? <laughs> it matters. It matters here on earth and it matters That's in right. eternity. And it should be done with a heart that, that, that is, is focused to Jesus. By the way, Elise, girl. <laughs> You've been praying. I don't, I don't share. I don't share. Elise doesn't know what I'm talking about until until she gets. She does finally end up getting my script at the end of the week. This sermon was written before you posted your your um, your worship set. And you and listen, you and the worship team are in tune with the Holy Spirit. And I want to thank you guys for all you did. There's those songs that we sang today. Are all, I'm like. Lord, you're awesome. I can't believe this. Like, you're setting this up. This is like a hot knife through butter. <laughs> thank you, Elise. And thank you for your willingness. And Pedro and, and yeah. Tisha and, yeah, everybody. Amen. So we're all going to be judged. All of us, the, the, you know, we're all going to stand before God. Jesus is going to be our judge. It's not going to be a judgment of sin that's bought and paid for. It's going to be a judgment of service. And the last thing for your notes is this. Like I said, I knew it. This is going to be easy, right? We will receive rewards. Or we're going to lose rewards. We will, we will receive rewards. Or we will lose rewards. In other words... <clears throat> How we behave, the things we do, they will determine whether or not we receive or lose a reward from Jesus. Verse 10 again, just let's just get it over with. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us. For the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. In 1 Corinthians, in the, in 1 Corinthians uh, Paul refers to this whole idea, and this is why I just told Elise she's, she's in tune with the Spirit. He refers to this whole idea as building a foundation. Two of the three songs were about building our foundation. So, in other words, I'll give you the context so that we understand, because we don't have time to read through the whole scripture, but in other words, if you're wise, you're a wise person, you will live your life for God's glory. You're going to do things for God. And, and, and Paul calls that building your life on a good foundation. If you're a foolish builder, if you, you don't build your life the, wise, but unwise, then and you're living your life for your own glory, then we're, you're not going, you're going to be uh, not rewarded. If you build your life for God's uh, glory, you will be rewarded. Okay? So again, let me give you the context. You can turn over to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 if you have your physical Bible. Otherwise, it'll be on the scripture, but it'll be on the, the screen. But let me, Paul's writing his letter to the, the Corinthian church. What you need to know is the first Corinthians in our Bible is actually the second Corinthians. Mm -hmm. We don't actually have the first letter of the actual first Corinthians. Mm -hmm. So first Corinthians is really in, in, in actually his second letter and second Corinthians was actually his third letter. But we don't actually have the first letter where, where everything was going down. And some Bible commentators actually said they think that Paul was so angry. God was like, yeah, that's not getting in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to let this uh, we're going to just let this because the church was off the, off the chain man. The, church, the church was tearing up like it make any pastor quit you know what I'm saying like, I was like, oh. so I'm sure the first letter was pretty rough okay because 1 Corinthians is pretty it's, it's got some it's, it's pretty rough you know and there, the, this church was, was, was really was really having a, a hard time and Paul was having a hard time with it and um they're, they're arguing. These, these guys were literally arguing over everything, fighting over every, everything. They were taking each other to the court. They were sleeping with each other's mamas. I mean, it was bad, okay? It was, they were getting drunk at communion. Paul's just like, Lord, just come take me now. Come take me now. 
So, so there, Paul's, he's asked in, 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 in chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, people were arguing over who they should follow. Like, because Paul, Paul baptized a few of them, and there was another uh, guy named Apollos who baptized some of them, and they're like, well, I follow Apollos, so I do what he says. He's my pastor. <laughs> and they're like, well, I follow Paul because he's my pastor. I'm going to do him. He's on TV. <laughs> and they're fighting back and forth, and they're just, they're kind of doing all this stuff, and, and basically the, there's division in the church, and the, the church is split. By the way, by the way, when it comes to the church, and I'm talking about the big C now, but also New Song Church, when it comes to the body of Christ, God's math is always God will add to a, to a local body, God will subtract a local body. God will multiply a local body, but the one thing God never does is divide a local body. And, and, and only the devil divides a church. Only the devil divides a church. He may add to it and bless it. He may say, yeah, you guys are meeting straight now and subtract from it. Or he may multiply. God, bring your multiplication. Bring your multiplication. So the devil's always in the division, and since I can't really divide very well, I agree with that. Amen. Anyway, <laughs> look what he says in verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. By the grace of God, God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. He's talking about Apollos, the other guy. But each one, that's, that's us, everybody say each. each. Yeah, we're all in each. Should build with care. In other words, what we do matters. We're building our life on a firm foundation. What we do matters. Look at For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone, everybody say anyone, anyone. Yeah, builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day, now, now look, notice, day is capitalized. What's he talking about? The day, the day that we'll stand before Jesus, judgment day, the, 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 the judgment seat of Christ, on the day. On that day, uh, whether or not we built with precious stones and gold and silver, or whether we built our life surrounded, chasing after, and building with, with, with uh, wood, hay, or straw, it will be revealed on that day. In other words, what you build will be revealed. And look what he said. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's wow. work. Wow. All right. This, don't, this doesn't mean you're going to get burnt with fire. Okay. How about fire, scarecrow? No, it's not like that. Don't think like that. But what he's saying is, okay, here's all of my things that I did for Jesus, and on the day, it's gonna, is it going to pass the test of fire or not? What you do matters. What I do matters. And it will be tested as if by fire. Now listen, verse 14. If what has been built survives, here it is. The builder will get a reward. If it's burned up, the builder will suffer loss. In other words, no reward. But yet, we'll be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, but look at what he says. Even though only as one escaping through the flames. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've been praying about what that means, but I, all I can come to is my, my mom used to say, you, you know, you didn't get it by the skin of your teeth. Yeah. I, like, oh. I don't know. So here's the thing. You can be a believer, and, and, and in all seriousness, you can be a believer and saved and, and going to heaven but still be a foolish builder. Still be a foolish builder. In other words, you're building your foundation with wood. How I many know wood doesn't last really well with fire? Hay even worse. Straw even worse. Some of us are building with straw. Right? So you can be a believer, but you can also be a wise builder. You can be building your foundation with gold, Silver and costly stones, things that do not burn up very easily. So in other words, you can be a believer living your life for God and according to His purposes and His plans and the works that you do that matter in eternity, you're going to get a reward for. 
every time we do something with God in mind, with God at the center of it, with God at the motive of it, with God at, you know, in reverence of it, for the glory of God. All of our dream team are serving today. Everybody doing something. What you're doing today is you're serving for the glory of God, right? You're serving, and by serving, you're building for yourself up. What did Jesus say? Treasure in heaven. You're building up treasure in heaven. You're not working for your salvation, but because you're saved, come on, you're working, man. You're doing something. You're, you're, you're giving. You're a giver because God is a, is a giver. All right, so, so you can be a believer and either live your life chasing after the things of this world, the things that do not matter, the things, that, and again, they could be good things. There's things of this world that are really wood, hay, and, and straw. Your, your education ultimately is that. Nobody's going to be asking how far you got in college, in heaven. I'm not saying it's not important here on earth. It's important. Man, oh man, you know, we talked about this in Bible study this past week. It's like all the parents, all parents, I just want to talk to you for a second, just one second. You're forcing your kids, you can get them, get them, get out to, get to school, man. It's school, 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 school. And you're like, oh, you can decide if you want to go to church or not. I'll leave it up to you. I'll leave it up to you. What you do matters. What you're building matters. I'm just saying. It's like, it's like, listen, it's not, it's okay to miss church once in a while. You probably never heard a pastor say that. But what you put in front of, whatever you put in front of God, eventually you just, you just keep doing it. And listen, I'm just going to say this. If you keep trying to fit God into your calendar, he's never going to fit. But if you start putting your calendar around God, everything's going to fall into place. Everything will fall into place. Everything will. So, you can be a believer and either live your life chasing after the things of this world that ultimately do not matter, or you can be a believer who is putting God first in their life and, and, and working this out. Now listen, I, listen, we live in New York. Everybody in New York has a, you know... Uh, participation trophy con complex. And I say this with due respect. Everybody got to get a prize. Right? Well, the problem with everybody getting a prize is that people just think, I'm just going to get a prize. I don't have to do anything. If you've ever watched T-Ball with your kid, you remember T-Ball? T-ball is designed for parents that really just want to end it all. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wins. Right? Nobody wins. Everybody runs around the base. Yeah. It's pure chaos. Kids are hitting each other with the bat. The t they can't even hit the T yet. Right? It is painful to watch T-ball. If you haven't been there yet, I'm just saving you some time. <laughs> I'm saving you some time. And everybody gets a trophy. Everybody gets a What did they do? Did they hit the base even? I don't even know. Did they learn anything in T-ball? No, I'm, I'm, I'm over-exaggerating to make a point. T-ball's fine, whatever. Just go ahead and do it. But what I'm saying is, a lot of times we think that walking with Jesus is like that. You mean to tell me that the, the widow who is on a pension and dropping her tithe every time she gets paid, right? And the, and the dude who's making 100 thou a year and puts a 20 in the basket every week, you mean to tell me that he's going to get a bigger reward than her? According to Jesus, no. According to Jesus, no. When the widow put her might in the basket, he said, she gave more than all of these yes. people because she gave out yes. of what all yes. that she yes. had. You mean to tell me that the person that comes in and serves diligently and loves diligently and, you know, is in service to God, they're, they're, they're going to get the same reward as a person who never, hardly ever attends, barely shows up, barely serves, and you're everyone. No, there's no participation trophies in heaven. That's 
That's right. The only participation uh, trophy we all get uh, is the one that Jesus got for us that he bought for us. And even that is his. It doesn't belong yeah. to us. Yeah. We didn't earn it. We don't, we don't, we don't get, we don't, it's a gift. Yes. That's the participation yeah. trophy that yeah. we get yes. in heaven. So we don't, we don't get those things. I remember when I was in Boy Scouts, and I, I'm thankful for the Boy Scouts, but I, used, I was a knucklehead, man. <laughs> I was a knucklehead. And I, most of the time I spent time trying to get out of camp. Like all these kids going to camp, I was like, I don't want to go to camp, man. I was like one of those kids. I would make my life, and then I, I would just goof off all the time. Little did I know that they had trophies at the end of the, of the camp. <laughs> You know, best wood maker. You know, I had a lot of stick. I was like, I didn't do nothing, man. Right? I was like, I, I didn't do. And, and people are getting. And you know what? I got, I got nothing. At the end of the day, in Boy Scouts, I got like, uh, Mike's alone. Yeah. Move on. Next, next. What's the next? Who's the next team? I need to get a badge. Like you get merit badges. I got like demerit badges. Okay. <laughs> And I'm only saying this is because I didn't get anything because I didn't do anything. And I didn't deserve anything. So one day you and I are going to walk up to Jesus. We're going to stand before Jesus. And he's going to be handing out rewards. I don't know exactly how that looks like. But I just know it's like, man, I don't want to be standing there like I did in Boy Scouts. <laughs> did you know that you could serve God with the wrong motive? The right thing and the wrong motive? I just want to get up in front of the world and tell everybody how I can see. <laughs> it ain't about you. Yes, sir. I didn't like that worship song. Good, the good, because we weren't worshiping you. That's right. That's good. Glad you didn't like that worship song. It was for Jesus. It was for Jesus. You can do the right thing and, the, and have the wrong motive. We got to catch our hearts. Why are we doing what we're doing? Is it to be seen? Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets like, Here I come, the man of God. Watch how much I put in the plane. Look how awesome I am. Look what he says. He says, uh, you want to be honored by others? Well, guess what? You got your reward right there. That's right. <laughs> That's the reward you get. He says, uh, but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be done in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward. I want you to notice something. He says, then your father in heaven, right? Your, your father who sees will reward you. You are going to be rewarded by God the Father. Yeah. That's... That's awesome. Ah! You're rewarded by God. First John says, And now, little children, abide in Him that when He appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. Notice, he's, Lord John's words, again, little children, he's talking to believers, he's talking to the church. Mm -hmm. Why would a believer be ashamed at Jesus' coming when we're looking for Jesus' coming? Because they wasted their life chasing after things that don't matter. Chasing after things that are going to burn up. Going hard after the, all the things that do not matter in this life. In a hundred years, the only thing that's going to matter is, did you know Jesus and what did you do for him? That's all. That's all. They wasted their life. They believed in Jesus and they trusted him, but they didn't live for him. Didn't use their abilities for him. Didn't use their talents for his purposes. To build his kingdom. To further his agenda. Again, I'm not talking about our salvation. We're saved by grace, through faith, in Jesus. We can't work for it, but because we're saved, because we're a new creation, because Jesus is transforming us from the inside out, we have a desire to want to please Him. We want to please Him. We want to hear Him say, come on, well done. 
Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. We're saved by faith, but we're judged by works. Works matter. So what do we do? What do we do with this as followers of Jesus if, if it matters? Like, you said the answers were in the book, so what are some of the things we're going to be judged on? Well, you know what? I could give you lots of different things, but let's just kind of make it practical. I'll just give you a couple things. He's going to judge us on how faithful we are with the things that he's given us, what we've stewarded. In Matthew 25, Jesus tells the parable of the talents. A talent isn't just money. A talent is, it represents abilities. It represents time. It re represents putting time in. It represents opportunities to serve God and to serve other people. And those who were found faithful in the parable of the talents, they were rewarded. Uh, think about this. What would our community look like? What would our city look like if every disciple of Jesus started using their time, talent, and treasure for God's kingdom? I'm not just talking New Song. Before the pandemic, there were 16 churches in New Song, in New Song City. I always say that. It's prophetic. <laughs> in Co-op City. Imagine if 15... Bible-believing, Bible-teaching churches all use their time, talents, and treasure for the kingdom. Not for our kingdom, but for the kingdom. Imagine how the, our city would be transformed. Yeah. How long would it take for us? What kind of transformation would we see? What would it, think, what would it look like if every new songer who calls themselves a believer, who's a disciple of Jesus, what would it look like if we started living our lives according to what really matters for eternity? I'm not saying drop everything, go become a nun, drop everything, become a mom. I'm not saying give up your life. I'm just saying let Jesus in your life. Let him get him in the center of your life. Start doing things according to his will. There's a reward for, listen, there's a reward for sharing your faith. There's a reward in heaven for being a soul winner. When was the last time you shared your faith? You, you shared your testimony. You told somebody about something more than just what's going on in this world. There's a reward for that. There's a reward for watching and waiting for his return. There's a reward for that. Turn off CNN. Turn off Fox News. Turn off all these. Start looking for God. Start looking and living your life for God. What does he say about things? We'll be rewarded for how we treat other people. Yeah. That includes rush hour. <laughs> <laughs> it just does. This is extremely convicting. <laughs> it includes how we cared for the least of these. How, how we cared for the, how we took care of the orphan and the widow. How we served the marginalized and the broken and the outcast and the hurting. How we stood up for the things that, that matter in heaven. How we believe the things that God believes. How, we, how we, we, we talk about them with love, but unashamedly we tell the truth. We'll be rewarded for how we used our words to heal and to build up others, to speak life and not death. Get this, not because we have to. Oh, you're going to heaven, bro. But because we want to. Because, because we want to please him. Because we want to live for him. Because he has saved me. Because he's healed me. Because he's delivered me. Because he's set me free. Because he's transformed my life. Because he's healed my marriage. Because I've seen him do so many amazing things. He's kept me when I thought I was falling apart. He's always been faithful. No matter how faithless I play. No matter how many doubts. He's never once let me go. He's never ever left me alone. He's never turned his back on me. He's never ever done these things. And I want to live with a fear of him. I'd be awestruck by him. Tell others about him. I want to live for him. Jesus wants us to be his hands and his feet. By the way, I had that written down before Elise even said it. He wants us to be his ambassadors. 
Now, listen, we live in the greatest city in the world, right? Arguably, and, and, and the, the, um, the uh, I almost call it the Hall of Justice. <laughs> <laughs> you know the place uh, downtown with all the flags and all the ambassadors go? The United Nations, thank you. The Hall of Justice. Anyway, I wish it was the Hall of Justice. Anyway, we live there, and there are ambassadors representing their country. Listen, you are Jesus' yeah. ambassador. He's picked crazy you yeah. and crazy me. Love it. And listen, this is this is Jesus' M.O. Yeah. When he picked the 12, he didn't be like, I want the best Bible teachers. I want. No, he was like, I need that goofball right there. I need that knucklehead over there. I need, look at this guy over here. I need, oh, he's going to be awesome. I need. So don't get puffed up that God's using you. You're just another knucklehead like me, okay? And he uses the least of these. He uses the foolish things of this world to come because that's how he shines his glory through. He, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's, it's amazing, and he wants us on our team. Uh, as the worship team comes up, I want to leave you with just this last scripture. It's not in your notes, but uh, it was literally in our Bible reading for this for this the morning. And um, I want you to hear Paul's heart in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And so it's not in your notes. You can write this down somewhere in the margins. But I want to read it to you. And uh, let's do Build My Life, guys, okay? Because that was just awesome. Okay. Um, this is what Paul says. This is what he says. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. In other words, do. Do. Run in such a way as to, if you're going to run the race, do it. If you're going to sign up for a dream team, do it, do it. Be excited about it. Like, do it with all you got. Just do it. It's going to be awesome. Do it. It's like, run to win or don't run. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown. Look at this. They do it to get a crown that will not last. Why? Because the marathons you ran and the, and the trophies you won when you were in school and all those things, they are nothing but wood, hay, and stubble. They're not going to last. All the things that we're running for and all the accolades and all of the academics and all of the things, eventually it's not going to I'm not saying it's not important. It's just not going to last. So don't run your, way, your race with just that in mind is what he's saying. They do it for a crown that will not last. But listen, but we, but we, but we, you and me, the church, him, him included, he says, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. This is what he's talking about. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly around. He says, I, 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 I put myself into training. I do not fight like a man beating the air. He's not shadow boxing, the NLT says. I don't do it like I'm just shadow boxing. I'm, I'm aiming for the target. I'm working hard. I'm running the race. I'm, mo I'm moving forward. I'm trusting God. I'm, mo I I'm, I'm moving forward. And he, he says this. He says, No, I beat my body. <laughs> You don't have to do that. And make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. What he's saying is, yeah, I know I'm Paul and I know a lot of this, but I got to make sure that I'm doing things for the right reasons. I got to make sure that I'm doing this with the right motives. I got to make sure that I'm still, I'm still doing this for the faith, not for my glory, but for God's glory. I just need to check myself. I just need to be in this moment. I don't want to let you know that I'm doing this, these things for God, and I want you to know that you can do them too. Listen, Ed, one day, all this whole series has been about one day our life on earth is going to be over and we're going to see Jesus face to face. And it's going to be an awesome day. And part of that day, there's going to be a judgment. There's going to be a, a reward ceremony. And all I'm saying is I want you to get buckets and buckets of rewards, whatever they look like. I don't even know 
with it. But I want your I want your trophy shelf to be amazing. For Jesus. That's all I'm saying to you. That's all. And everything that I do as a follower of Jesus, everything I do as a disciple, is going to be remembered by God and rewarded by God. Every idle word I said, every gospel, gossip that I spread, all those things, God's going to know. Imagine him saying to you right now, well done. Imagine him, when you see him face to face, he says, you ran your, your race well. You kept the faith. You cared for the least of these. You were the only salt and light that was in your office. You were the only salt and light that was in your school. You were my ambassador, and man, you did an amazing job in the Bronx, in, in Brooklyn, in Manhattan, in Staten Island, where none of us go. In Queens. Well done, my good and faithful sir. Would you bow your heads right now, right where you are? Here's the thing. I just want to, because I know what, what was going through my he head when I was preparing the message. And you, it very, very, very could be that you're thinking, you know, I love Jesus, but <laughs> I've been kind of running my own race here, apart from him. I've been kind of running, build, doing things, kind of building my own foundation, and I'm realizing that. Most of the things that I'm building are, are wood, and they're made out of wood, and they're made out of straw, and they're made out of hay. And if those things aren't gonna are gonna be put to the test, then I just know they're not gonna last. And if you're beating yourself up right now, here's here's the good news: you don't have to beat yourself up because the same grace that God saved you with is the same grace that will empower you and motivate you and change you from the inside out. You've just got to be willing to accept God's grace. That you have to be willing to accept God's grace to change your motives, to change your attitude, to change the way that you think. Paul said, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise, wise builder by the grace God has given me. And so, let's not think about what we haven't done. Let's start thinking right now with every head bowed and every... Let's start thinking about how what we can do for Him. Let's start living for Him right now. It's, it's not too late. It's not too late. Listen, we have a saying around here. We haven't said it in a while, but if you're not dead... God's not done working with you. And the same grace that he gave, that he saved you with, he's going to sustain you with. He's going to help you with. So if that's you right now, you say, every, every head bowed, every eye closed, I don't want, I don't want anybody to feel any kind of way. You say, you know what, Pastor Mike, I've been kind of, I, I need to just kind of build a better foundation. Lift your hand, I want to pray for you if you're here. Lift your hand right there. God bless you over there. God bless you guys. Right up, 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 up. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Father, right now, Lord God, I pray, Lord, we didn't, you have not given us, Lord God, and there's no condemnation here, Lord God. This isn't about, we're, we, are, we are not condemned, Lord God. We thank you for our salvation. But God, there's work to do in our hearts. And so, Father, we, right now, I pray that that same grace we accepted, that same grace that we, we held on to when you saved us, Lord God, will be the same grace that motivates us, that, lets us, that helps us, Lord, to become wise builders. Lord, that we're not going to waste any more time. We're not going to waste any any more minutes, Lord God, with foolish living or foolish building. In Jesus' name. Now I want to just talk to you really quick. Because I know this whole message has been geared to our believers, followers of Jesus. But you may be here and you're watching and you're not a follower of Jesus. And I want to say, you know, you're probably thinking, well, this is great. They're all going to get judged. Usually we're the ones that get judged. Don't get it twisted. There's a judgment day coming for you too. And it's not, as, it's not as nice. It's not as nice. We get to stand before Jesus, saved, 
But you'll stand to stand before Jesus not seen. But today you can change that. You'll stand. We're not gonna be we're not gonna be a, have a judgment for our salvation. But your judgment is called the white throne judgment. And by that time it'll be too late for you to choose Jesus. So if you're here today and you want to choose Jesus, you're watching online and you want to choose Jesus. Lift up your hand real quick if you're here. If you're not, if you're watching online, pray this prayer with me, Father God. I choose you. I choose your gift. Save me. Thank you for sending Jesus. Help me, Lord. Transform me. Fill me with your spirit. Help me to live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would everybody stand to their feet as we close out in worship today? I want you to just sing this with all your heart. I will be.